Good morning. It's Monday, the 12th of December, 2016. Just before I came up the uh, up the stairs to have a little chit-chat with you this morning, I was just watching the Jeremy Kyle show, boys and girls. Now, I'm, I'm not a regular viewer. Now and again, I'll flick on the telly, and uh, if it's there, it's there. And once again, just dreadful, awful people screaming and shouting at each other. A woman and a mother of, oh, and, and the and the bloke, and shout, shout, shout. And they were all on send. Do you know what I mean? Everyone was on send. No one was on receive. And it's just awful. Just horrendous, that programme. Did you see it this morning? What was it now? Um, she's accusing him of being violent. And, and and being a drug addict and all that. And then they tested him and there were no drugs in his system. I, and, and looking from the outside, I think you can often tell whose fault it is. Or do you not think so? Do you think some of the people who are sitting there, you know, like, oh, you know, and, 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 and he didn't do it to me and all this. this. Uh, do you think some of those people are just good actors or actresses? What do you reckon? I think it's the whole thing is absolutely horrendous, and they put that on any every morning. Uh, my friend, I I put a little message on Facebook with a picture of the two women on there, saying you know awful people on Jeremy Carl this morning, and uh, our good friend Dawn down there in Brighton put a message on saying, do you mean them or the program? Yeah, you're absolutely both. <laughs> <laughs> Both. Can't we have something nice on in the morning? Nice and humorous. Even reruns of Are You Being Served would, would be OK. With Mrs. Slocum, her pussy. And, of course, John Inman. I'm free. They were, I think they're all gone now, aren't they? Is that right? Everyone in Are You Being Served is gone now, you know. So that great television centre in the sky. Oh, yes. Uh, and then in between, in between Jeremy Carl, uh, the adverts came on and I do like as you know the Christmas adverts which I'm loving at the moment the beautiful Christmas adverts but there was one that came on there and I laughed the one for Toys Are Us have you seen it where you got the choir of school children on there singing the hearts out all looking happy as sandbags what well, a shame that the reality of going into a Toys Are Us shop is nothing like that because we went me and my mate went uh uh, it was actually two years ago now. We went two years ago to Toys R Us in uh, Reading, which is kind of on a industrial estate. You know, one of those industrial estate uh, uh, things. They've got a, a staples, the usual, you know, the furniture world, the extra large carriage. And there is Toys R Us. And we went in there. Uh, you've never been somewhere so miserable in all your life. It's not pretty. It's not happy. The staff looked like they couldn't be bothered. Just awful. Horrible, horrible place, Toys R Us. And that, that does make me laugh. When I saw the advert on there this morning, la la, Toys R Us, Toys R Us. Oh, everyone's singing and looking happy. Can't you put some of them in some of the shops, dear? Make everyone else look happy. Happy! Like the people in Hamleys, where I am going tomorrow to Hamleys, boys and girls, to do my Christmas shopping. You might pay a little bit more there. But honestly, and I say this, this is the third year we've done this now, uh, me and my mate. We jump in the car, we go down to Hamlet's, probably go to another couple of shops as well. I've got to go to a John Lewis, actually. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Hang on, let me just write that down before I forget that. That's it, there we are. And um, uh, you go in there and there's, uh, uh, there's children trying out all stuff. There's parents in there looking at stuff. There are people going around giving demonstrations. Uh, a lot of them with those drones, you know, little drones flying around all over the place. Young members of staff, um, I suppose they're university people who have got temporary jobs in Toys R Us, uh, sorry, in um, in Hamleys, and they're giving demonstrations and talking, and they're happy. It's a happy, happy shop. You've got to go down to Hamleys at some point, even if you don't do it for Christmas, and then go into a Toys R Us, and you will see the difference. <clears throat> it's lovely and bright and colourful. And as as an old child myself, that's where I'd want that is where I want to be uh, for Christmas. In a Toys R Us shop. In fact, I would be very grateful if the Toys R Us shops opened on Christmas Day, boys and girls, and I could just move in there and play with all the toys. I never know what I'm gonna get. Well, I do know one thing I'm gonna get, and that's for uh, great nephew George, who's four now. 
and uh, he wants a train set. And I've I, I've got a kind of in my mind or got itch in my mind. I've got a bit of an idea what sort of train set I want. It's got to be plastic, I think. And it's got to be battery operated. No electric. No electric. I mean, even with an electric train, it's only like 12 volts going for the rail. You don't get an electric shock on it. Uh, but even so, uh, the rails are quite sharp. You know, they're all metal, so it's got to be a plastic one. And uh, I shall be, hopefully, testing them out. In fact, once once I get the gift, shouldn't I hope my niece isn't watching this. Once I get the electric, the battery-operated train set gift, I may have to test it out in my house for a few hours. Oh, just, just to make sure it works. We love electric trains. Oh, dear. And I'm so glad that he's not into computer games yet. How boring. Beep, beep, beep. Just sitting there in front of that screen. My nephew likes them. Jimmy. He's he's coming down Friday. I'm very excited. My nephew and his girlfriend. His girlfriend's coming as well on Friday. Oh, terrible, dear. And I, I've, I'm going to have to make up two rooms. We can't have them staying in the same room, dear. That's outrageous. I mean, what would Father David say? I, I rung up Father David. I told you on the live show the other day. I said, oh, hello, Father David. Oh, hello, Chris, because he's Irish. Irish. Hello, Chris, how can I help you? Uh, that's not a very good Irish accent, but it's the best I can do. I can't do accents. I'm just about to do singing at the moment, but my voice, can you hear my voice is still deep? Deep and husky. You like deep and husky, don't you? Yes, I can tell you do. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so he's coming on Friday and um, he's, uh, now how did we get on to my nephew? Oh yes, he loves computer games. He's got that one where they're, they're like shooting each other and it's like a war. Now, what's it called? Very, very popular. I think they've had a couple of them out. Can't remember what it's called. Anyway, and I'm watching it and he's got a little microphone on connected to his um, uh, box thing. His uh, games. I don't even know what one it is now. His games box thing, what he plugs into. And while while he's shooting these people, he's talking to other people on the microphone. Yeah, I don't know what they talk about. <laughs> no, no, are they are they discussing where they think the next soldier is going to appear from on the screen or something like that? So a lot of people are into it, and it, it never did me. I stopped at Pac Man. I stopped. <laughs> I stopped. Once it, uh, once I, once I'd done Pac Man, that was it. I wasn't interested in computer games anymore. Funny, isn't it? Anyway, yeah. They're, so they're coming down. And Father, da oh, good morning. Oh, so, so that's the me. Now it's supposed to be me first, isn't it? Good morning, Father David. Is Chris here? Oh, hello, Chris. So you're the one that sits at the front. Yes, hello, Father. He said, yes. Well, what can I do for you now, Chris? I said, well, I'm a bit of a situation, really. I don't know what to do, Father. Perhaps you can help me. Oh, go ahead, Chris. I said, yes. My nephew. Oh, hang on. I'll pick, I'll pick up a phone for added effect. Okay. Yes, um, my nephew's coming down to see me on front. Oh, that's wonderful, Chris. Is he coming in to see us here in the church? Uh, well, no, I'm afraid not, Father. Um, but uh, he he's coming down with his girlfriend. What do you mean, Chris? I said, well, they're coming. He's coming down with his girlfriend, who I haven't met yet. The good news is she's a vegetarian. All right, uh, but but yes, I mean, and, and I'm not sure how, what to do, really, Father. I mean, obviously they want to stay, you know, in the same room. Hello. And then he hung up. So I don't know what to do. With. <laughs> he's coming down Friday. And um, uh, then I think he's driving here. Then I'm driving them into London from where they get a train to go over to the Winter Wonderland, which is this big thing. Uh, I think it's on the embankment. In t I can't remember where it is now. Is it on the embankment? Just a moment. I will just check this up for you via my internet services. Winter... Wonderland. Let me have a look here. Good morning. Can I help you, caller? Let's have a go there. Winter. It's at Hyde Park, Winter Wonderland. And there's like fun fair rides and stalls and eating things and just games and all that sort of business. So he's going there and then they're coming over to Central Station uh, to uh, to sit there while I finish my karaoke, which finishes at midnight. That's on Friday between 8.30 and midnight. And it's also tonight, but I'll tell you about that later. And um, uh, hopefully, maybe they'll sing a song together. That would be quite nice, wouldn't it? Would it have to be a loving song, won't it? Now, what loving songs would you suggest that my nephew and his girlfriend Charlotte sing on Friday night? Any suggestions? Send them through, please. Oh, yes. So I'm looking forward to that happening. 
Um, what else have we got here? Oh, yes. And also tomorrow, I might go to John Lewis. I've dropped my pen there. Let's get another one. I might go to um, uh, John Lewis while we're up in central London and get another mattress topper. Now, you know I've already got a mattress topper. And I've told you the little feathers, little ends of feathers, now and again, poke through. Now, they don't hurt, but they're annoying. And um, I'm just turning over the mattress topper the other day, which I like to do every few days. I turn it over or give it a good puff up. And I've noticed <clears throat> the bottom of it, like where the top and the side is. So it's a top, side, bottom, yeah? So they're about so, I suppose about so thick, something like that. And I notice the bottom of it is splitting away and you can see all the feathers. <laughs> and if it goes any further, there are going to be feathers everywhere. So Ronnie got that for me. It wasn't over expensive. You know, it was from one of those websites, buy cheaper from us. So that's where and I've learned from that. You should never buy cheap. You buy cheap, you buy twice. So that's what's happened. Now, I've had it. Only a few months. So he's going to try and get the... Because Ronnie is good at getting refunds. He's very, very good at getting refunds for stuff. Honestly. So he's going to try and get a refund for that. Meanwhile, I'll go to John Lewis because I looked up on the internet last night. John Lewis do one. And they've got this new material, apparently. That's, that's like cotton that goes around it. And it's uh, feather proof. So the feathers will not poke through the top and presumably the stitching would be better around the side as well so you see as i said just then you know you buy cheap you buy twice you know it's, it's never a good idea and hopefully that will sort that out but we can't have, we can't be having the cat go mad because they love feathers don't they cats meow 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 they love feathers and there will be feathers everywhere if i keep turning that damn thing I suppose gaffer tape, because gaffer tape fixes everything, doesn't it? Yes. That's uh, hopefully our little trip tomorrow to Hamleys and um, uh, John Lewis as well. <clears throat> I did see the X Factor, bits of the X Factor uh, yesterday. And it was quite funny, really, because what I tend to do is flick through. And it was nice to see. I saw the Louis Tomlinson. Tom, 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 is it Tom Kin or Tomlinson? That boy from One Direction. Uh, one Direction, whose, whose mum sadly died last week. I saw him do his song, and that was quite powerful and, and, and quite nice. And uh, then I saw the winner. The funny thing was, when I went announcing the winners, you know when I say, and the winner is, and then that, that music builds up, boom, 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 and everything one goes quiet, and the camera goes to them, and the camera goes to them, camera. and he's sitting there, or he's standing there, what's his name again? Matt. He's standing there, and he he clearly looks like he doesn't think he's going to win. He's a abs you could absolutely tell he thought there was no way he was going to win because they were both very good. And then it cuts to the girl, and the girl had this smiling face on her. Um, what was her name? Oh, X Factor finalists. Just a minute. X Factor finalists. <clears throat> One moment, please. Sarita, is it Sarito? Sara Alto, Sara Alto, Sara Alto, and it cut to a shot of her, and she was really beaming and smiling, and she looked like she expected to win. So he looked like he, he you know, fair enough, he'd got so far, he seemed to be happy, but didn't look like he was going to win. And she absolutely looked like she was expecting to take the crown, and they announced that he won. How funny is that? And I was killing myself laughing, watching at least two. At which point, when they announced he won, he immediately fell to the floor backwards. <laughs> Good on you. Well, I hope he makes a career out of it um, because he's got a great voice. He's good looking, but he now needs a look. The trouble with the X Factor is that they don't really have a, 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 a their own looks apart from the novelty people, like Honey G. Who was that awful man? Um, Wagner. Oh, Wagner. Do you remember Wagner? Do you remember him? Well, get this. Get this. Let me, let me see if I can bring this up for you. Um, my mate, Ross Patzelt, who does um, internet radio shows, and he's been doing it for quite some time, almost as long as I've been doing internet radio shows, actually, uh, although I don't do them anymore. Um, his name's Ross Patzelt. You can find him, actually. Uh, 
Facebook.com forward slash Ross Pat Zelt. All one word. R-O-S-S-P-A-T-Z-E-L-T. He does this radio show and you can have a little listen to him if you want to. Anyway, he asked Wagner if he could do a little interview with him. I'm just trying to find the... Um, I'm just trying to find the... Uh, the messages that, that we had going backwards and forwards. Oh, I can't find them there, can I? Oh, how annoying is that? Anyway, so he got a message back from Wagner uh, who said, well, he does he does do chats, but it will cost him, but he charges for interviews. And it was something like eight quid. <laughs> eight quid? I mean, man, why are you bothering? You know, he, he, I don't think he has a career now, Wagner. He probably goes into little clubs and things like that and does stuff. But um, eight quid, it must cost them more than that in administration. I'm trying to find it here. Ross Pat's out. Let's see if I can find the message. Here it is. Here it is. Oh, no. No, that's not it. Where did he send me this message, Ross? Come on, where are you, Ross? Um... If I could read you the exact message that he gave me. No, it's not. Is it that? Is that it? No. Can't find it now. Oh, how annoying. I can't even remember what date we might have. Ah, ha, ha. One minute. One minute. Let's see if we got this here. No. Oh, dear. No, I can't find it, unfortunately. But, yeah, he charges eight quid for an interview. <laughs> Do you think someone like Shirley Bassey would be a little bit dearer? <laughs> I mean, I don't mind paying Shirley Bassey eight quid to do an interview with her. Can someone let her know, please? Or even be or, 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 or no, not even not necessarily even better. But I'd love to have a chat with Theresa May. It wouldn't be politics, I'm afraid. It would be, you know, oh, where'd you get those shoes from and that sort of thing. <laughs> eight quid if you want to chat to Wagner. Get your money in now. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so good luck to Matt. But he does need a look. He needs to get out of the X Factor look because I don't think that does him any good. Not when they're on like, uh, I was going to say Top of the Pops now, but of course it's not on anymore. When you when you turn on the music channels, which I, do, which I don't do, I can't bear that. Having some blooming music blaring out your telly 24 hours, like bang, 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 bang. But, but when you look at the people on there, they've all got a look, haven't they? You know, they've got a certain look. Whereas if you're off the X Factor, it tends to be a jacket and a shirt. A little bit like what I, a little bit like, uh, like I'm wearing at the moment, and I don't think that does them any favours. They need to create a look. I, check out Honey G with those glasses. Did you see the glasses she had on? Honey G, Honey G. We wait. You say uh, I say Honey. You say G. She's got a record coming out. <laughs> what has the world come to? Eh? Never mind. Never mind. Right. Let's do some birthdays today. And then uh, we have, uh, did you notice anything in here today? <clears throat> the Christmas decorations are going up one by one. You see the mirror ball has been taken down and been replaced by this little happy blue character, which I actually, uh, that actually is not a Christmas decoration. I've got to tell you that. That actually came from uh, Scarborough. When I was down on a, a little holiday with my niece and her wonderful little family, uh, Ben, her husband, um, uh, George, the little boy, and the little girl, Emily. We were going around the shops, and I saw this, and I thought, what a fabulous thing to put up instead of the mirror ball at Christmas time. So that's what that is. Does it need a name? Do you think it needs a name? <laughs> <laughs> birthday time. Where's our birthdays? Come on now. Uh, one moment, please. I haven't got the birthdays up here at the moment. The, uh... I keep getting messages from, from, from women on Facebook. Offering services. I, t I do. Is that awful? Wait, wait a minute. Oh, come on. I can't get the birthdays up now. They won't work. Now, why is it? Have they moved the birthdays? Uh, that's strange, isn't it? I'll have to go to calendar and do it like that, I think. What's the date? 12th today, isn't it? The 12th. Oh, there we are. Happy birthday this morning to Martin Butcher, who is 27 years Oh, today. Happy birthday, Martin. Haven't seen you for a while, dear. Do pop in sometime. Happy birthday, Martin. Dom Gooden is 28 today. Happy birthday, Dom. Marth Matthew Hymus is 22 today. You're the young lad today, aren't you? You're the youngest today. Happy birthday, Matthew. And happy birthday today to Adam Parker, who does not reveal his age on the Facebook. Here comes the song. 
no piano here, really. Look. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Have a wonderful birthday, boys and girls. Now, we're going to be going downstairs for our first Christmas carol very shortly. But first, let me tell you about our karaoke tonight. Every Monday night, do join us for karaoke and cheap drinks at Central Station Bar in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. Starts at 8 o'clock and finishes at 11.30. Every Monday, join us for karaoke. That's tonight at Central Station Bar in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross, from 8 until 11.30. All right, then. Now, being as we're now coming up to Christmas less than two weeks away, each day, Wendy has suggested we have a Christmas carol. So off we go. Come along now. Hello! Here we are downstairs now. As I say, Wendy has suggested we do a little Christmas song every day or a carol going up towards the uh, Christmas day this morning, uh, going up towards Christmas day. So here we are downstairs. And um, I don't know whether you'd rather have piano or church organ or quiet church organ. So I might, I might vary it now and again, because I've got different instruments on it. I've got strings, which is quite nice. All right, so, so something about it. So, so this morning, I think we'll have a mixture. That's what we'll have a mixture. So this morning's carol, or Christmas hymn perhaps, is O Come Emmanuel. Now, do you want me to sing it or not? I don't think we should sing it. We'll just play it. So here we go. This morning's carol is O Come Emmanuel. Ready? Big finish. There's your first Christmas song. Now, if there's a Christmas song you like or a carol like that, please send it in and uh, I'll try and play it for you. That's it today. Might see some of you tonight down at Central Station in King's Cross. Apart from that, have a nice Monday. See you soon. Bye-bye.